Welcome back to another episode of Current Mood. Please clap. I, I really identified with please clap, by the way, when, when Jeff said please clap. I, I got it. That's my whole life is please clap. Welcome back to another season of Current Mood. I'm really making this up as I go along. I've just decided it's a new season. Happy New You. I won't say Happy New Year because we all know that after two weeks of January, a little desperate saying Happy New Year to someone that far into January. I am your host, John Mayer. We are back. As always, we just go look at the thumbs up and the smileys for a minute. It's called fan interaction. Yep. Okay. I'm going to get please clap tattooed on my back. <laughs> right across the top. What's up, Diplo? Who knows where Diplo's? Diplo's probably at some internet cafe in some country somewhere downloading illegal MP3s. You know, you know every song Diplo plays is an illegal MP3. Did you know this? Hope I'm not giving away too much. <laughs> Uh, tonight, we have a sponsor tonight. Let's get this uh, right. We have a sponsor now every week. Uh, uh, tonight's sponsor, uh, who was I just talking to about that? That's the sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Are you nearing your 40s? Brain starting to go a little bit? Try who was I just talking to about that. It wasn't you. There were two people there. And it was outside. Who was I just talking to about that? You ever do that? You ever who was I just talking to about that? Who was I just talking to about that? Thank you. Also sponsored by, this is the first I'm hearing of this. Uh, all right. Well, look, um, when, as Motley Crue says, when we start this band, all we needed, needed was a laugh. Years go by, I say we're kicking ass. I am Motley Crue. This band is current mood. I still need the laugh and the kicking ass is tonight's guest lineup. Oh my God. Huge moments in both these guests' lives. Andy Cohen is in Los Angeles expecting the birth of his first child, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the Dynamite Young Singer, I'm just gonna call her Dynamite Young Singer from now on. Maggie Rogers, as of this afternoon, is confirmed to have the number one album in the country on Billboard, ladies and gentlemen. And I would like to let everyone know that yesterday I got a cool new jacket. So, everyone's, everyone, thank you. Thank you. everyone's winning. Everyone's a winner here tonight. Um, all right, well, I think it's probably time we get to the segment of the show. I like to call. Can I talk to you over here for a minute? Hey, the Oscars. Can I talk to you over here for a minute? Like, I know everyone's kind of wondering how you're going to pull off an interesting show. And I worry just as much as you do. You guys come at the end of the award season. And it seems to me the same movies are going around and around the track. Some are winning, some are losing. But it's the same six, eight movies every single time. So by the time you guys, the biggest award show of all time, gets to the end, everyone's kind of bored of it. That is why I'm proposing a wild card rule for the Oscars. You pick one movie, you throw it in the batch after you announce the initial nominees, and you just watch the sparks fly. I think this would be interesting. I would certainly tune in. Now, John, you ask, do you have an idea for this wild card film? I mean, off the top of my head, yeah, I really do. I think the film that should be added to the Oscar nomination list is Peppermint, starring Jennifer Garner. <laughs> By the way, you're allowed to laugh. Okay. You don't have to keep it quiet. I'm, see, I'm hearing stifled laughs. We should have had a warm-up guy explain this to you guys. Um, you don't have to stifle the laughs. It's not a eulogy. <laughs> So, uh, and I'm not making fun of Peppermint. I thought Peppermint was a really fun movie. I'm sure it has problems. But so does every movie where a woman goes on a rampage and kills everyone in her sight. That's a flawed movie from Jump. Uh, Saving Private Ryan, it is not. 
But, but it's a movie I call, in the category, a homesick movies. And if you live in downtown L.A., I guess it's also a homesick movie. Because if, uh, remind you home, because that's where most of the film is shot. And, uh, all right, you're saying this is a crazy idea. This is a crazy idea. Let me say this, too. Peppermint, Oscar-nominated film Peppermint. We're just trying that on right now. <laughs> Oscar-nominated film Peppermint. Uh... It's the only movie nominated for an Oscar where uh, the lead actor uh, compresses a wound with a sanitary napkin. And uh, I think that's pretty impressive. They don't do that in Green Book. They don't do it in Green Book. So let me give you an example of how this might read. For best film, okay, I'm going to pretend I'm, I don't know, Matt Damon or someone. For best film, the nominees are Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody, Peppermint, <laughs> the Favorite, Green Book, Roma, A Star is Born, Vice. I should have put Peppermint somewhere in the middle of the list for comedy, but I thought it was funnier that it go at the beginning. For Best Director, the nominees are Spike Lee for Black Klansman, Powell Pawlowski, Cold War, Yorgos Lanthimos, The Favorite, Pierre Morel, Peppermint, <laughs> Alfonso Cuaron, Roma, and Adam McKay, Vice. Congratulations to all the nominees. Wow. So, there you have it. Think about the wild card. Because let me tell you something. I just made a conversation about the Oscars interesting again. That was, can I talk to you over here for a minute? Hey! Hey. Hey. We all got the hang of it now. Uh, someone is asking, what is happening? <laughs> There's two ways to read that. What is happening? <laughs> and what is happening? <sighs> Someone said this song actually came up on my Spotify release radar. Well, uh, it would be amazing if I had that kind of pull. I mean, it's a good song. It's the peppermint of songs. Because uh, it's fun. And I'm, and, and I'm not trying to rip on anybody here. Um, can you see the audience? Oh, can we see the audience? Um, do you ask Colbert to spin the camera around? Uh, yeah, you can see the audience if you want. It's a... Uh, yeah, I mean, you don't say no on this show. I'm a yes man. I mean, I'm just going to flip it, and, and this is what I look at. Oh, that's interesting. That's one of the cameras. Now, this is weird, huh? Oh, you know, we call this on Instagram. We call this art. Right here. Some, and drop a new sneaker colorway like this. All right. One hype beast in the crowd. Well, really rolling through this show. Um, I fucking love you. Thank you. ZXCK underscore four. All the people who swear on Instagram have under, underscores and letters in their name. KD underscore seven. These are bots. You could be anyone you wanted to be. I don't think we've run through every permutation of word that we need underscores and letters, but I believe. What up, Russia? What up, Russia? Um, oh, someone's trying to sell a Stratocaster like it's classified ad. <laughs> I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of that. John, if you see this, sing a little bit of Mississippi Queen. Uh, if I see this, I should Google who sings Mississippi Queen. Is that Mississippi Queen? And is that... Hold on. Is that... That's not Credence. Who is it? Who sings... Mississippi Queen. Mountain. We've got a guy in the crowd that says Mountain. I'll tell you one thing that sounds good. It's about that song. It sounds good coming out of an army helicopter. Okay. I bet that's a good song play if you're in an army helicopter. You know what I mean? There's some songs that are only good if you're in an army helicopter. Mississippi Queen, surely one of them, right? You know what I mean? People holding on to their hats. The brush sort of going, Mississippi Queen. You know? Some voiceover, we were there based on a lie. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's always something like that. You know what would be really funny? I've always thought if there was like a Rambo-style movie where there's this ex-commando who swore off killing and he goes to the far-off reaches of the world, but he's needed again, the enemy has returned. And only this guy who's disappeared has the wherewithal to take him down. And so the army general... Flies, probably listens to Mississippi Queen, lands, finds this guy 
deep in the jungle and he's got this giant beard. I mean, this giant ratty beard, as you can see, like our hero now is, uh, doesn't she, he's disappeared. And then um, he goes, I don't do that anymore. And the guy goes, the general's like, well, you know where to find me if you change your mind. And he gets off and they fly away and they play Mississippi Queen a lot. And the guy's like, that guy, they listen to Mississippi Queen a lot. <laughs> but then the guy does decide to join up again and he goes back to Washington and he's like, I'm in. But he never shaves the beard. <laughs> and so for the entire rest of the action movie, he has a disgusting beard. <laughs> I just think that would be funny. <laughs> it's a long way to go. <laughs> a long way to go for just a couple jelly beans. But imagine the beard swinging around during action sequences and stuff, I guess. I don't know. I'm embarrassing myself in front of the guests. Um, hey, so we should probably get to our first guest. He is the dearest of friends of mine. Um, he's out here in Los Angeles awaiting his first child. He is unbelievably fun. He's gonna teach us all how to be controversial and yet also be beloved at the same time. This guy makes news more than anyone and somehow manages to stay beloved. He knows how to walk that line so brilliantly. Can we go live with him for a minute before, um, let me see if there's any requests here. Let's go live with, with, with Andy, who's, uh, who's hanging out in Mood Kitchen, which, AKA, my kitchen. <laughs> People getting ready to say hi to Andy. Andy! John, are you the kind of guy that serves cocktails out of mason jars? You know what? The previous owner of my house was. And I'm the kind of guy to not Whoa. buy new jars. Uh, <laughs> all right. That was very Montana. This was feeling very Montana, though. Hey, all of Andy Cohen's followers, come follow me over at, at John Mayer. We're about to have a conversation with Andy. I'm doing this with my hand. Not sure why. Nervous tick. Andy, come join us now. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. What do I do with this? The one and only. <laughs> Andy Cohen. Yeah. Wow. wow, this is cozy. I love it. Andy, Andy, Cohen, Cohen, Nolan, the baby's coming. Sounds like love hangover by Diana Ross. You know you're it. not gonna sue it. You're not gonna sue him. You're not gonna sue him. You're not gonna sue him. Because I'm just saying I can't mess with this. <laughs> What are you drinking tonight, Andy? Oh, it's fun. You know what? I'm, uh, it's an experimental cocktail. Uh, it's a tequila and watermelon Perrier <laughs> that doesn't totally work, but ultimately does the trick. And um, you only have Reposado tequila, so it kind yeah. of also, it, we're really putting scotch tape on the cocktail. You know what I love about Reposado tequila? What? It's the only drink that also serves as its uh, blood alcohol content test, because you just have to try to say Reposado. Right. <laughs> and yes. the drunker you get on Reposado, the harder it is to say Reposado. That's it's fun. its own breathalyzer. Have you had enough to, have you had something to drink tonight? No. Um, uh, what are you drinking? Tequila? What kind of tequila? Don't want to say. <laughs> say it. Reposado. You're going to jail, buddy. You're going to jail. You take Your over. hair looks good tonight, John. Well, because I talked to you all week about my hair. I know. We had a lot of talks about your hair last week. But we also anyway, I think we landed on something good. What did we land on? Uh, what your hair is. No, we on. did. I, yeah, I yeah. made sure to Marco Polo with Andy the whole time I was getting my hair cut. It's true. Is that codependent? I don't know. Is it a gambling addiction if you keep winning? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You know what I mean? Let me tell you something. 20 minutes into the show, that was that was. What time like, is it, Andy? Oh. Show them up. Do we have matching watches right now? I thought of the most obnoxious thing oh I could think God. of, and yes, we do. John talked me into this watch. Yes, I did. Um, Actually, you didn't even really talk me into it. You guided me. I guided you in that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. It's the right one. Yes. Thank you. Anyway, um, so you, uh, before we get to the main event, which is talking about the baby shower you had yesterday, with yes. as I'm told, every one of the housewives from every city, almost every, there were like 
there were five or eight missing. Yes, but it was it was an incredible. Imagine it was the Marvel. It was the Marvel. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. it was the Marvel superheroes all coming together. It was under and, one roof. And imagine the Marvel superheroes all come together under one roof, and John Mayer also shows up. John showed up two hours in and glided in, and we had a seat for him uh, between some of the OGs, and John was quizzing. Uh, Vicky Gunvalson from Orange County, the, the, the OG, NeNe Leakes, the tastiest peach in Atlanta, about a variety of things. And John got an earful and, uh, so right? I, I heard the funniest thing. I was talking to somebody. All I remember is that she was sitting to my left. I don't remember much else. Okay. I don't remember her name, and I feel very sorry. There's only one is person who knows. Teddy Mellencamp? I don't okay. remember. Okay. <laughs> I think it was Teddy Mellencamp, okay. actually. Yes. Um, was that the one who said my dad's John Mellencamp? That is correct. <laughs> oh, that was her. No. <laughs> She's... No, that was Cameron from Dallas. Oh, I know. Okay. I, so uh, she said, to, I said, are you in a relationship? And, uh, and she said, the funniest thing, she said, well, I'm currently married. And I thought, <laughs> I thought that's such a housewife answer. That, well, as of this moment, as of the moment you ask, I'm st I'm currently married as it stands. Well, I first of all, let hilarious. me say two things about that because you did just really put Teddy Mellencamp on blast. Okay. Well, you know well, okay. First of all, but, finding but, out that Teddy on. Mellencamp is mad at me, I probably no, no, won't no, no, ever no. find out. So it's some blog will say that I'm on, I put her on blast, and I'll be like, I don't. I don't know the universe. I'm a DC guy. <laughs> right. That's funny. But second of all, I feel that when John Mayer asks a woman, so are you in a relationship? I feel like if the woman is yeah, married, true. the John Mayer answer is, yes, I'm currently married. <laughs> because they're saying, you stick around. I don't know. Well, I, don't I know feel like that's what you get. I don't think you dug her out with that answer. I did. No, I definitely didn't. No, I didn't. But she, by the way, she's madly in love with her husband. He's a great guy. He's on the show. She's they currently madly in love with her husband. Current it's all you can ask. Oh, by the way, current it's mood. all you can ask for. It's all you can ask for that somebody currently. What else it. happened at, to you at the show? Okay, so I have to be really honest about this. Okay. I felt a little bit before I went, like, am I crashing this thing? This seems like Andy's. No, you were well invited. And I was very well invited, and I checked several times to make sure that, that yes, I was invited. Of course. And I got there, and I want to show this to people. This is the picture seen around the internet. All right. Um, we're going to go to, this is the very first time we're using wow, this. Sure. Uh, this is the picture. Yours. Take a look there at it this. There it is, yes. Now, this is me with every member of the housewives congregating together, which I'm told is a first. Yes, it's, it's, this is an iconic picture, just so you know. But the it's problem- It's become, it, there's a lot of memes of this picture. The problem is, I didn't think to say to Andy or everyone else, now one with just the housewives. <laughs> Imagine standing next to all the members of Led Zeppelin getting a photo with them and not being like, and now just Led Zeppelin. <laughs> so this photo now lives. And I want to show you what I see when I look at this photo. Here's what I see when I look at this photo. <laughs> look how, <laughs> that's, that's what I see. So that's I figure funny. I'm just going to make the photo bigger every time. That's so funny. I felt really, really badly that um, John felt like he you expressed to me that you felt like you should have, like, thought. why didn't I leave the photo so you could be in a photo with all the housewives? And what I said to you was, I did have control of that situation and I would have made that happen if I wasn't enjoying you being, the, being right. in the photo too. I just wanted I thought it made it fun. It, I wanted other people to know that I didn't assume that I should have been in that photo, but I have a plan. Can I tell you what the plan is, Andy? Okay. The only way to make that photo no longer worry me is if I somehow make it into the housewives universe and then it will be a photo of all housewives. Gosh, what? You're in because you're you're like in the middle of Tony Mellencamp's marriage right now. <laughs> we will be discussing you at the Beverly Hills reunion, uh, which we will tape in a few months. If you can do that, it would make me feel better. Because... No, you already did it. Uh, <laughs> um, you are the master of making headlines. Okay. 
I have a new show, Current Mood. It's starting to kind of kick up. Starting is this, to would we say this is the first episode of season two? This is the first episode of season two. Really? Okay. We're back. We've made huge How do you changes. delineate the seasons? I, I make it up as I go okay. along. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. It's okay. not a, exactly a, you know, super airtight administration here. Right. It's me <laughs> okay. and some You are these for, states. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, so, so, so true. Um, so, Andy, help me. I got an eye full of your hair right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was like, that was, that was, you're not often this close to someone. I really I feel like, you. I feel like, like people are just ripping screenshots off left or right. I mean, we're, we're, we're like very that. close. <laughs> Screen, let's get some gifts. Ready? Let's get. <laughs> Great. Just some gift making. Teach me how to offer something, a pound of flesh here, say some. How do I make this get picked up by Too Fab? How do I get picked up by Pop <laughs> Sugar or Too Fab? How do I get that real Monday morning pickup based on something that was said or asked, a game we played? How can um, I do it? Well, okay, so this is a reverse game that we play on my show. Teach me your talent. And you can teach someone your talent. So okay. I'm gonna teach you my talent. Well, let's do it right now. So teach me your talent. Yes. Okay, so there's a few things. I mean, the low-hanging obvious fruit is that if you said anything about an ex of yours, mm -hmm. but that's like the obvious. What Second, if I said just an ex's name? No, no. Would that go, would that be picked up? No. I think it would be. I don't. Katy Perry. If I said Katy Perry, and then we stopped, does that get picked up? No. What if um, I said it a second time? <laughs> no. Really? If, no. Katy Perry. What if I, I said it with that no, face? No, that's not going to get picked up. That's not. Oh, you what said if, it. Hold on. Did you just say it with like a questioning face? What if I whispered it? Katy Perry. Um, no. If it was like a sexy whisper, I think. Katy Perry. Oh my God! Maybe now you could now you could be. But all I'm doing is saying a name. I'm I know. Just saying no, a name. I don't know. And by the way, it's so hard to quote. You know, you know how many adjectives you're going to force these writers to come up with. And I then know. he said, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't think so. We're out of it. We're out okay. of it. The other thing is what something. If I sung it? What if I no, sung it? the thing is something sexy. Mm -hmm. Is there something about sex? Something? Do you have a fetish involving your balls or anything? I mean, is there anything that pretty you want to report? Okay, pretty utilitarian on the ball level. Okay, um, uh, it could I, be anything. Are your nipples sensitive? I have three nipples. Okay, if you have three nipples, it's on tonight. I have like, three nipples. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you. Wait, do you have you ever talked about that? No, this is a this is a current mood first. Okay. <laughs> no, but is it a world exclusive? This Not a, a current mood this first. Is, a world is it a world exclusive? I have three nipples. Are you gonna show them? Okay, so oh nah. don't tell me that's it's called a supernumerary is it nipple. Sensitive? Oh god, okay. Oh <laughs> god. I'm close. So, look, look, that is a third nipple. It kind of is. It is. It's just it a small. Might smaller... be a. I mean, I'm I don't know what it is. You're the it worst is. doctor ever. <laughs> okay. You're the worst doctor ever. I showed you something with a medical name, and you kept looking. It might, but it might be. Is it? What do you think it was? I mean, I'm no doctor, obviously, but is it a mole of some sort? Is this a mole? No, that's your nipple. So is this? Okay. All right. Okay. You having three nipples and never shown them, I feel like could possibly be news. News. Right on. Because doesn't Mark Wahlberg have three nipples? Mark Wahlberg. You're in that three nipple club. Hold now. on a second. Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Does that work? No. What um, if I saw You have it? three nipples now. So Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Well, I came to a yeah. screeching ball. <laughs> yeah. You're on a list with Mark Wahlberg now. I'm on a list of, with, uh, with supernumerary nipples. Yeah. Yeah. You cool. have three nipples now. Okay. Well, I, I feel like I feel like you could have just done it. I feel like that was maybe something that could get picked up. Well, we John just... Mayer. John Mayer breaks his silence yes. about his third nipple. Yes. That's a potential headline for you. Did I go on a rant about my nipple? John Mayer. Look at my nipple. Up. Look at my third nipple. He has sounds up. He, you know what? You should speak to the people with three nipples who have felt 
maybe <laughs> isolated in the world or that maybe people look at them in a, mm -hmm. in a way. Do you feel marginalized as someone with a third <laughs> nipple? I would imagine that that would be really hard sometimes. I'm kind of doing all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> kind of doing all right. But some people aren't. I am a lucky one. I am a well-to-do three nipper. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Is your third nipple sensitive? No, <laughs> but my first and second aren't. That oh, okay. Yeah, Do you think you could grow into a place in your life where nipple play becomes part of your vernacular? Only if someone else just loved it to death. Okay. If they were excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Are you right? excited about it? Um, You're like, not anymore. No. Yeah, no. I Don't do me any favor. Kind of a later in life, it started to light up for me later in life. When did nips light up for you? <laughs> In my 30s. Really? Yeah, late well, 30s. Yeah. See that there's hope. But there's I'm 41, hope. so I feel like. Well, you're in the cusp area. All right, maybe I'll be a late in life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, look, I have a gift to give you. Wow. Because uh, I didn't bring anything in the shower, except oh, unnecessary you brought presents. Plenty, <laughs> you know, you brought plenty yeah. to the shower. Oh, Trust this me. is a gift for you. Wow. For okay. your child. Do I open it? I would right love there? you to open it right okay, now. Okay, thank you. I love the wrapping. Did an assistant wrap this, or did you wrap it? Just Neither. Period. The store oh, wrapped it. The store wrapped yeah. it. Wow. Okay. Clearly not a TV-friendly <laughs> unwrapping a present on the air. Jimmy Kimmel was on the show the other night, and you came on and surprised me and came out with the gift. And Jimmy's gift, and Jimmy had been joking about it earlier, but it was a fully wrapped gift and then had crazy thick tape on both ah, sides yeah, so of packing tape. Yeah. I was like, oh my but God. But you're still so good, you small talk through it. You're really stuck. Oh. Little, little moccasin. This been moccasin. Oh my God, these are this man. Did Liz pull coordinate? No, Liz pulled it. Oh my God, this is amazing. No moccasin. These are little this man moccasins from John's favorite freaking label. And so I can keep the moccasins in, in this little bag, bag, my biz bin bag. Thank you. Wow, thanks for my gift on Current Mood. Thanks for my cocktail. You're, you're very welcome. Um, I love it here. I love your show. Big fan. Are you going to stay? Excited about season two? Yep, sure. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, give uh, it up one more time for Andy Cohen. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Geez, you know, let me just tell you something real quick. This show started out as something that I did to entertain myself because I was sad or lonely on a Sunday night. And it started in my kitchen, just mere feet away. And then I thought I would do it in front of a, a whole setup here. I put this all together myself, literally with duct tape. And you guys, with your attendance and your enthusiasm, turned this into a show. It was just an idea. You guys turned it into a show. The last week that I've had, has been one of the biggest thrills of the last few years of my life, watching this show kind of become a real thing. It doesn't exist without the number of people watching or the people texting me or DMing me saying, when are you gonna do it again? When are you gonna do it again? I cannot think of a better way to come back. We're gonna have Maggie Rog Rogers on in one second. We're gonna ask her to stage for her performance now. We've put this whole thing. Maggie, come sit in your little uh, driver's seat here. And um, this- you're going to just sit right there and okay. sing your song. All right. And then we're going to do the world. Just jump behind there behind you. And we're going to play uh, along with you for your song, okay. Light On. And then we're going to talk for just a quick second. And uh, I get to do this announcement. This is um, my next guest. is a dynamite young singer who this past week released her debut album, Heard It in the Past Life. It's just been announced that it will debut at number one on the Billboard Albums chart. I'm thrilled beyond belief to have her on my little show tonight. Please welcome, accompanied by Zane Carney, Melanie Fay, Sean Hurley, and yours truly, performing her magnificent hit song, Here Is Maggie Rogers. But give it a second. Let me get my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing sort of an art thing with the hoodie. You can do whatever you like. But you guys are going to be having a little bit of fun. Yeah. 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 So well, what would you like to do? Would you like to turn this way? Well, I just want to play with everyone, too. Well, we're right behind you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a look. Yeah. 
I'm not out front on stage. I'm with the band. Yeah. All right. Here we go. You want to count it off? Or no, well, how about the, how's that for a tempo? Great. One. You, you, you just start singing. Would you believe me now if I told you I got caught up in a way? Almost gave it away. Would you hear me out if I told you I was terrified today? I was gonna break. Oh, I couldn't stop pushing. Slow it all down. Crying in the bathroom. Figure it out. With everyone around saying you must be so happy now. Oh, but if you keep reaching out, and I'll keep coming back. But if you're gone for good, then I'm okay with that. If you leave the lights on, I'll leave the lights on.
my gosh. That was so Beautiful. fun. You're unbelievable. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Isn't that fun? Be around people uh, who just admire your work. Will you fire up that, that light again? So... <laughs> How incredible. How incredible is that? God, I just love playing music. I can, so that, um, I can absolutely feel it. Thank you guys so much. I, um, you guys did this whole thing. We and set this up. I, I ordered, I don't know, you can't see the lights that amazing. were on Maggie's face. Like, I bought them, they're, they're star like projectors. Stars. Well, it's amazing that Melanie's here too. Melanie's coming on tour with me. And we've got, we've already played one show together with the Fonda. We've got a whole bunch more all over the US. And so it's always- Everyone in this room loves you. And with really Hi. good reason. Hi. Um, what kind of week are you having? <laughs> um, I'm having the best week ever. It's, I, it's, um, yeah, I, I feel full of a whole lot of joy and light and um, putting a record out is like a big breath. And it's, it is a big record too. And I actually- I brought you a coffee. Oh, you did? Yeah, it felt like, thank you. It felt like the right, thank, thank you present. Well, you'll have to sign it for me because- uh, it, We'll open it. Oh! I wrote you a note. Thank you. Can I show it? Can I show yeah. it? Yeah. Thank you for your endless enthusiasm and support for these things I make. So happy to be a part of Current Mood, Respect and Gratitude, Maggie Rogers. This is going on the wall. I really mean yeah. it. And no, this, thank you so much. You've thank you. You've really been incredibly supportive. Well, it's easy when something is this great. And everyone in this room who makes music, you know, we listen to other things and we're, we're not critical of it in a way like we're watching sports. We're waiting for heroes to come around. And we listen to new music all the time. We just wait around for heroes to show up, you know? And the only time we ever get kind of upset is when one doesn't show for too long, you know? And when I first heard Falling Water, I went, oh no, there's a hero. And then another song and another song and another song. And you know, you said, you. I really mean it, and you're welcome. And you said, these things that I make, you know? People don't yeah, have this, like... you have a very strange relationship and a beautiful relationship <laughs> no, with wait, your wife. Wait, why is it strange? Because your love for music isn't in any way seen selfishly. It doesn't seem like this comes from, how do I say this? You are not it, you are swimming in it. Do you know, you are like, even you turning around and going, whoa, that's really great. You're responding <laughs> to music in a way that's not a, you are the um, sort of music loving superstar that I wanna see where you're, you're not trying to come out of the floor with smoke and, and, and pyro, although if that's what you wanna do, I'll back you. I mean, I'm sure pyro is really fun. You'll find a way to make yeah. it authentic. <laughs> <laughs> like fire, like I'm sure. You'll no, find thank a way. you, thank no, you. I, I really like, well, I think it actually is selfish in a way because music is like, it's just always been a part of my like mental health process and the way that I like understand the world. And so writing is this like, there's this Bjork quote I think about all the time where she says, the more selfish you can be with your music, the more giving you're being. And I mm -hmm. think like, I've, I always describe my job as being vulnerable for sport. Yeah, because and you're like, very vulnerable. I'm very vulnerable, but I feel really like privileged to have this community around me that makes space for me to be vulnerable. There, you have this thing as a writer, and and it, it goes beneath the. Okay, so there's people. It's very, it's very common. I don't want to say it's easy, but it's very common for people to write angry. Uh, you've done me wrong. How dare you? Why would you do this to me? And and, and God knows that. That's a lot of how people feel a lot of the time. You're, what I sense as a writer is writing things beneath the anger. You said something, and forgive me for paraphrasing it, maybe I never loved you in the way that I could. What's the lyric? Yeah, I, I never loved I, you, I never loved you. in the way I could. That kind of accountability as a writer, <laughs> if that's what actually people think after they scream and they get in the car and drive away. They actually think, I never loved him in the way I could, but they don't say that. They say, how dare you? You've done this. Mm -hmm. And the level of honesty under you're going beneath the anger, beneath these demonstrations of being upset, and you're going into examinations of accountability on an emotional level that's like, you, you are gonna do it for, every, for everyone who writes, for everyone who, I mean, you are gonna do it for us. Like, I think there's so many people doing it for us already though. Yeah, but then you're just like, then you just come through with that thing. It's like a lightning bolt. Uh, Thank you. I have a question for you. Bring it on. Okay. Uh, you had the best week of anyone in music in a long time. <laughs> you have a number one album. You have sold out tour. Your tour is already sold out. You have a hit single. 
Maggie Rogers, find something to complain about. <laughs> um, there's a lot of people with an incredible amount of injustice at our border wall. I did not see that coming. That's a wonderful answer. A lot of things. Women in this country still have equal pay. Uh, I had my answer, and yep, women, women equal pay. Same thing. Same thing. Wow, that was the ballers' answer. I was like, she's gonna have to complain about planes. She's gonna have to say something about. There's some really big global issues. That that was the wokest thing that ever happened in this house. <laughs> that was unbelievable. I know I had to follow up the nipple conversation. So <laughs> I, I felt that for the, the whole time I was talking to Andy, went, ah, she's so happy to be here. I have a couple of gifts to give you as well oh, wow. before we uh, sign off. Wait, I have a story to tell you. Please. So this is, a, well, for, I have two things to say to you. Okay. Um, I have a story to tell you. Please. So this is, well, I have two things to say to you. The first thing is that this doesn't end well when people start a sentence. <laughs> but I was like, oh man, I, well, I grew up listening to your music. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna get to like talk to John Mayer. Like, what do I wanna say? Go for it. Okay, I have two things. Mm -hmm. So for everyone that doesn't know, this tape's at John's house. You have a heated toilet seat. Yes, I do. <laughs> that's so baller. <laughs> okay, so how do I, well, okay. No, that, that, that's, that can just be a state, that can just be something I needed to tell you. You don't have to follow. Are and you interested? You I think it's, I think it's, it's a no. Experienced it before, but it's um, uh, this it's okay. really it's, it's I, a luxury. The previous owner put these total toilets into the and I don't want to say who the previous owner of my home is, but a simple cursory Google will tell you it's Adam Levine. <laughs> <laughs> props to Adam, Levine's props to Adam Levine, oh, yeah, really, and his way too clean butt because <laughs> this thing is yeah, automated. I that, yeah, there's a lot of other settings that yeah. didn't test out, but yeah. I appreciate it. Um, but the, toilet the thing in the middle of the night will just go like, feed me. It just goes like, <laughs> <laughs> it'll make these noises. That's maybe more than I need to know. Well, that's but what it does. But <laughs> it makes all these noises. It's cool. I just wanted to thank you for some for giving me something really to aspire to. You, uh, I'm sure your manager loves you hanging around <laughs> me. We we share some management. Fun. I we used to have this. I had the had some great years with the management company, up, and they had to deal with. Uh, John Mayer blowing money left and right. So you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to look around. Put blinders on. Do not look around my house because they will, they will inspire you to make more music and spend more money. Okay. Well, I'm saying? excited about the music. Anyway, um, number two is you made a couple of your early records with a producer named John Alasia. Yes. In a town that, you're from. that I'm from. Yes. Shout out to Eastern Maryland. Eastern Maryland. I made so, room for squares on the water in Eastern Maryland. When I, so first of all, I used to hear about you like going to dinner. At Out of the Fire? School, wasn't it? Out of the Fire. This guy out of- And the bistro, of... and I, it used to like spread around town like, John Mayer's going to dinner. And I used to have sleepovers in middle school at the house like two doors down from where you were recording. And many years later, as in like two or three, I left a, <laughs> a, a note in John Elijah's mailbox telling him how much I loved his work and I'd love to talk to him about music production and all these things. And we, and here we are, many years later, far from Eastern Maryland. You And you are, whatever you were listening to and whatever you were doing, you are the hero for a lot of people who write music. You are going forward and Thank inspiring you. so many people. You are... Well, you were very much that for me at that time. You. So thank, thank you. You are the blessing of getting older for me. You are, you know, people always complain about getting older. If I have to be older so that there's also a you coming up, then I go, God bless, like, we get you, because I'm in my 40s, fine. I'm happy to go on, because we get you, and you do it better, you do it more modern, and you do it with everyone, sort of, you got, you got everyone's heart valves right in your hands right Thank now, you. and it's really beautiful. And someone right now is watching this show, uh, and they're gonna say, uh, why would you have ever done that, number one? And number two, they're going to say, I watched you on Current Mood 15 years ago, and you made me want to play my guitar when I saw you perform. And it's just going to keep going and going and going. And that's kind of what I mean about mm -hmm. you and me. Do, and I do have the same feel. Like, we're just swimming in this thing. We're never, I would say now, like, yeah. I'm not it. I just have access to it. Well, I think that's the thing about, about music or the people I love creating the most with is, like, this, this last week I got to play with John Batiste on Colbert. Mm -hmm. And he just, like, has so much joy and when you play with him he's just like music 
it, it elevates everything I do around him because he just has so much just like, yeah. Music just makes him so happy that it's contagious. Yes, and it's you contagious. have it's and having the flow of just like feeling and 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 being open to that feeling is um, it it just makes me happier than anything else in the whole world. I get the sense that you're one of these artists who doesn't know where their boundaries end, and when every time you sing a song or you write a song, you are exploring just like everyone else is. What's next? What what's next going to come to you? Mm -hmm. And I, I love that you have no idea yeah. where your fencing is. You're just going to keep going. And it's like the yeah. matrix. And now I know Kung Fu. And you'll just do that. And you'll know this song and that. And to get to discover your own talent while the rest of the world gets to discover it in real time, that's showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know that. Oh, right. Sorry, go, go. I just I didn't know I signed up for showbiz. But oh, you're in showbiz. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I read somewhere, this is how cool okay. stuff is. You were looking for a new hobby. I am. You said. Yeah. I'm looking for a hobby. I don't really know what I want to take yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. I tried a couple and they, they didn't, well, they worked, but they weren't as practical on tour. Precisely why yeah. I have come up with a hobby you might get into. Okay. That you can also take on tour. Okay. I'm going to, should I close my eyes? Open. <gasps> oh! You thank never know. You. Show everyone it backwards what it looks like. I got 101 amazing card, card tricks. Card tricks. Yes. And a deck of cards. Oh! Oh, thank you. You know, I, I love magic, so. Maybe a little sleight of hand before the middle of the set. Wow. Maybe right before I'm the light so on, you also, you never know, but it'll fit in your, in your day bag. Wow. You know, you ever go on, someone, someone's going to give you a gift of a giant book one day on tour, and you're going to look at them, and you're going to go, you realize I'm on tour. <laughs> they're going to get 200 pounds No, you just up. have to rip the pages off as you read them. <laughs> <laughs> chapter is, one's in Prague, chapter six is in Amsterdam. That is the it's most resourceful thing I've ever heard. And then I have one more thing. Thank to you give so you. much. You're very welcome. Next time I see you, I will. Um, Amaze me. Yeah, I will. Amaze me. I will. Uh, you've amazed everyone here tonight. One more thing. You are booked solid on a sold out tour, I'm sure, for the next 18 months. I wanted yeah. to give you one more thing. Okay. It's backwards, but everyone thing on the show has to be backwards. Okay. This is a coupon for one free freak out. <laughs> <laughs> so the world is asking a lot of you. My right? record is made up of many of them. Well, this is one. You tell them John sent you for this one. <laughs> you want to cancel the interview? You want to you oh. go late on stage by a couple hours? Oh. You hand them this one free freak out coupon from me wow. to you. Wow. It's amazing. This is the only career that justifies emotional immaturity. Yes. Yeah. We make a good living at it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you for this. You're very, thank you for coming on the thank show. Thank you so much for having me. Maggie Rogers, thank ladies you, and gentlemen. Give it up for Maggie Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so now, now, this show just, this is the greatest show. We're going to all go to dinner after. This is the greatest show I've ever done. 14.2 thousand people watching. Maggie just played, she just showed you how great she is singing this song with these acoustic guitars behind her. But I have one more thing that I want to tell you. You see this? This should have been a map of the United States of America, but I printed the wrong one out. <laughs> Why am I holding a map? Because I want to tell you some tour dates, people. I am going on a summer tour. And I want to give you the dates right now. You all asking about when am I going to go on a tour this summer? Now is the time I will tell you. The first tour date, it's July 19th. It's in, it's in Albany, New York. <laughs> July 20th, Providence, Rhode Island. Shit. <laughs> Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, July 22nd. Fuck. <laughs> Washington, D.C., July 23rd. I need smaller pins. New York, New York. Madison Square Garden, July 25th and 26th. Give it up for that. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, July 28th. Really needed a bigger map. <laughs> Toronto, Ontario. Don't test my knowledge. <laughs> Toronto, two nights. July 30th and 31st, this is the first time hearing of this. Detroit, Michigan, August 2nd. I know where that is. Columbus, Ohio, August 3rd. All right, working our way. St. Paul, Minnesota, August 5th. 
I know I'm not totally good in Minnesota. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, August 6th. Right there. There's Milwaukee, Wisconsin right there. <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee, August 8th. Charlotte, North Carolina, August 9th. <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, August 11th. Indianapolis, Indiana, August 12th. I'm just going to lay that one across. Right there, that'll just sit right there. Chicago, Illinois, for two nights at the United Center, August 14th and 15th. Snowmass Village, Colorado, August 31st. Maggie Rogers' song stuck in my head. Kansas City, Missouri, September 2nd. September 3rd. St. Louis, Missouri. Yay. Yeah, St. Louis, says Andy Cohen. Dallas, Texas, September 5th. Yeah, back to school time, babies. San Antonio, Texas, September 7th. September 8th, Houston, Texas. Yeah, rest in peace, DJ Screw. Phoenix, Arizona, September 10th. Here we go, here's the good stuff. San Diego, California. September 11th. I'm sorry, whatever city fell. I'm sorry. The fabulous forum for two nights, September 13th and 14th. And finally, San Francisco, California at the Chase Center on September the 16th. And ladies and gentlemen, this right here is your John Mayer Summer Tour 2019. Yay! Give it up. Also, I want to let you know, the show is going to be sold 360. We're going to go all the way around the stage. We're going to fill it up. And there's no opener, two sets. And I'm also going to declare this. A lot of people have asked me, John, what is the Grateful Dead's music brought to you? What is playing in Dead and Company brought to you? Are you going to play any songs that are like more Dead-like? Well, you know what's brought to me? Every city that I play two night stands. No repeats, ladies and gentlemen. No repeats. No opener, an evening with no repeats, multiple dates, 360. I will see you there. Thank you so much for keeping the music that I make alive and going. Thank you so much to Andy Cohen for giving up some of his time. Yeah. Any minute he's been done. If you can, he can be sad to go to the hospital in a minute. Thank you to Maggie Rogers for legitimizing this show the way she has musically. Unbelievable. Give it up for Maggie Rogers. <laughs> follow at Maggie Rogers. She's an amazing follow. She's a content queen. She's amazing at posting stuff. You're going to love every song she both has and will have. I know it. Thank you guys so much. We will see you again next time. But before I go, I want to let you know, I gave Maggie Rogers a pass for a free freak out. And I'd like you to know you all have a pass for a free freak out. You all have multiple passes for a free freak out. Every once in a while, you hit control, alt, delete on your heart and soul. Refresh it over a half an hour and you're back. So if you want to freak out, freak out. I'm your host, John Mayer. I love you dearly. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday night. One more time. That's the show. Ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you soon.